is 15 days till the man burns and today we're talking about more weird things that you might want to bring to burning man so as you probably guessed from me saying part two there is a part one to this video but there were just so many weird things that you might want to bring to burning man that i couldn't squeeze them all into one so like with the first one this is not about the basics you know dust masks goggles lip balm sunglasses we're, we're not talking about that stuff it's the slightly stranger stuff you might need Ziploc bags are a must. Big ones, small ones, medium sized ones, all of the ones. Just make sure they are good quality. You will need them for collecting moob, for storing any like used wipes or anything like that, you know, things that can't go down the pores to lose. You can pop food leftovers in them and zip them up so they're not like stinking up your bin at camp. They're great for keeping dust off of things, you know, dust mask filters, underwear, socks. You will use so many Ziploc bags. Obviously anything you want to keep dust off of, it's best to kind of put them in the bag before you head off to Burning Man. Otherwise they're already going to be dusty and the Ziploc bag is kind of pointless. Every camp should have a bucket with a lid. It's not a requirement, but it's just kind of an opinion. Buckets are great for like wet waste, kind of, you know, food leftovers, things like that. Anything that's going to start stinking up your camp if you don't have a way to like seal it in the bucket. It is especially important if you're part of like a large group where potentially you would be creating more waste than you know a smaller group would. It's also nice to have a bucket with a lid for emergency situations. You know, if someone is gonna throw up, would you rather them just throw up in the middle of your camp or to be able to shove a bucket under their face so they can puke into that? And then, you know, you can seal it up with the lid. The same for like peeing or pooing. You know, if someone is gonna have an emergency situation, it's much better for that to be happening in a bucket. Going with that, some people like to bring along kitty litter. Kitty litter is very absorbent and it helps to like minimize smells. So if you've got that bucket with a lid and you're throwing all your wet waste in there or someone's just thrown up in the bucket, you can like sprinkle some kitty litter on top. It's gonna suck out some of that moisture, like absorb it and it'll help cut down on the smell so that when you do have to open the lid, you know, you're not just getting a huge like cloud of stinkiness in your face. Cheap sunglasses. I know I said that I wasn't going to mention things like sunglasses and lip balm, the regular stuff, but sunglasses are a bit different because you might just think, I'll take my sunglasses, like my nice sunglasses that I've paid good money for. But sunglasses are really easy to lose or break. So bring along a few pairs of cheap sunglasses, ones that you are not going to be sad about if you break them or lose them. Plus, if you only have one pair of sunglasses and they do get broken or lost, you don't have any sunglasses, you are going to spend the whole rest of Burning Man like just squinting at everything. You'll have huge crow's feet by the time you get out of there, which is it's not going to be fun. Muscle rub is another great thing to have in your little medical kit. Some of you are probably in good enough physical condition to, you know, set up all your camp and everything and run around and do yoga and dance all night and really not feel the pain in your muscles. Some of us not so much. Some of you might end up having some achy muscles afterwards and having some muscle rub, something you can just put on there to just soothe them a bit is gonna be really, really nice. So if you're worried that might be you, bring along some muscle rub, find someone to rub it in or, you know, be self-reliant, rub it in yourself. But you know, just remember to like clean your hands afterwards. You don't wanna be that person that goes to the port loose after putting on muscle rub and things are getting a little bit hot downstairs. Guy rope covers or like lights to put on your guy ropes are amazing. You will trip over so many guy ropes when you're there, you know, they are just invisible at night. So if you can light them up in some way so it's really easy for people to see where they are, then that is great. You could use like a pool noodle or something that you split in half and like just pop it over the guy rope so now it's nice and thick, it's really visible. And if someone does walk into it, it's not gonna be quite as dramatic as like getting hit by a guy rope. Rebar and rebar covers are another thing that you're gonna want. Those tent pegs that came with your super cheap tent, they are probably not gonna actually hold your tent down if there is a sudden wind because the winds can appear out of nowhere and they can be super, super strong. Basically, if your stuff is not secured down, there is a chance it's gonna go flying off across the player and you know, you're just gonna be chasing after it. Rebar or lag screws are kind of the popular way to really secure things down. But if that seems a bit complicated, then you know, getting some really decent tent stakes should do the job. Just don't use those really, really crappy ones. Whatever you decide to use to secure things down, make sure you bring something to cover up the ends of it. You don't want them just like poking out the ground because at night people won't see them, they'll trip on them, they might scratch themselves on them. So tennis balls with like a split down them so you can just like stick them on top, that works quite well. Or you know like plastic bottles cut in half, you can pop those on it and like tie them on really securely, pop some rocks in the end. Just you know, if you have things sticking out of the ground, 
make sure they are covered up so that no one gets injured by them. Moisture, just general moisture, <laughs> you know, moisturizers, lotions, coconut oil, eye drops, nasal sprays, whatever you can think of. If it is introducing moisture into your body somehow or moisturizing skin or delicate parts like eyeballs, bring it along. Obviously you don't go crazy, you don't need like a whole suitcase just full of lotions and potions, but just make sure you have some stuff, you know, lip balm, eye drops, things like that, to just keep any areas that might get dry feeling okay. The inside of your nose is a big one, a lot of people kind of suffer with that. And you know when the inside of your nose gets really dry, it gets really, really painful just to kind of breathe. And your eyes as well, especially if you wear contact lenses, no one likes to put contact lenses in when they've got like dry eyes or they're like gritty and dusty. Any part of you that's just gonna be unbearable if it gets too dry, make sure you have something for it. Electrolytes, so again, this one is quite well known, but in case you haven't heard of it, you should bring along some electrolytes. You can get them in like drink form, you can get them in powder form, so you just like mix them with water. But you know, with the dehydration, you are gonna be drinking a lot of water and that's gonna be flushing the electrolytes out of your system. So you need to be replacing them. If you don't replace them, I think it can actually be quite dangerous. I think you can get quite sick if you like just flush your system with electrolytes and don't replace them. I'm not a scientist, I don't know how electrolytes work or dehydration and all that kind of stuff but that's kind of how I see it. You, you kind of need to replace those electrolytes so that you don't get dehydrated or get sick. Having a compass with you is pretty handy, especially if you get lost out in a dust storm, you'll be able to tell, you know, where you are and which direction things are. If you check on the map, it should have like which direction north is. So if you're in a total whiteout, you can't see, you can check your compass and you'll be able to make it back to something or at least choose a direction for a random adventure. Of course, you could just choose a random direction without a compass if you just want a random direction, but you might end up, you know, just walking further and further away from everything until you hit like the trash fence. <laughs> Jumper cables, spare tire, basic kind of mechanical type repair kit. Even if your car is in like perfect working order, you have never had to change a tire, you have never had to jump it, anything like that. You know, probably don't want Burning Man to be the first place that that happens. And with the amount of people that are there, you know, what are the odds that at least one person is going to have to have a jump or change a tire? If that person ends up being you, then you probably want to be prepared for it. Trying to get like a toe out of Black Rock City is not easy and it is incredibly expensive. So bring along any emergency bits that you might need to get your car running so that if something happens when you go to leave, you go to start the car and nothing's happening, you can sort that out. If you break down somewhere along the long drive home, you you know have the stuff you need to kind of get things working. It's a good idea to also have like roadside assistance coverage just in case like something happens, you can't fix it and you know, you need some help. It is a good idea to bring along two leaving outfits. You're gonna spend a long time in the dust and when you're at Burning Man, you kind of just embrace the dust. You don't really notice it after the first couple of days because you're just permanently dusty. It just becomes like your state of being. But once you have left and you're on that long drive, you will start to notice all the dust again. So it's nice to have an outfit that you can pop on that you know wasn't like your clothes that you used when you were tearing down and moop sweeping because those are gonna be super, super dusty. And a second outfit for when you manage to get a bit clean. You know, if you're having a stopover or something and you're gonna be able to have a shower, you probably don't wanna put on dusty clothes again. You probably want something nice and clean. So what a lot of people do is they will have like one outfit or two outfits that they put in a Ziploc bag and they just leave them in their vehicle or leave them, you know, somewhere safe. They do not come out of the Ziploc bag for the duration of Burning Man. They only get opened, you know, when you want to actually change into those clothes. It makes you feel that much better when you're leaving Burning Man to actually be able to change into something that isn't covered in dust. So I hope this was helpful, guys. If any of the rest of you have any, like, weird things that you love to bring to Burning Man, then let us know in the comments below. And if you see me out there, then feel free to come and say hi to me. Bye, guys.